Hello everyone. I hope you are doing good and uh, again welcome you to the YouTube channel Panther Schools and uh, I hope you are enjoying this Salesforce plus WhatsApp integration series. So the last video was how we can send the message with the help of Postman with that is using our Facebook API. One thing that I would like to mention for the last video is whenever you are replying to the test message which was sent with the help of template, you just need to reply once. Once you have replied at least once, you can send multiple notification messages which you want. You don't need to reply to every message. Okay, that is one thing that I wanted to clarify. So in this video, as discussed, we are going to talk about how to see the debug log or how to receive the webhook notification whenever someone is trying to reply to our message in our WhatsApp. Okay, that is what we are going to see it over here. So before we go ahead, please do it uh, like, share, subscribe, also press the bell icon so that you don't miss any update from our channel. Now let's talk about how you are going to do that. Okay. So first thing that we need to do over here is we, we remember we created a class in the previous video where we had a get method. We were returning a hub dot challenge, which was basically nothing, which was being sent from Facebook itself to make sure that this is a authentic URL for the web. It's not a intruder URL. The hackers are not going to try to get access to the sensitive data. Okay. Now, before we go ahead, I already have this method set up, but before we go ahead, let's talk about how we do know that this is what we have to set up over here. So again, I'll take you to the document page, not document page, to the application detail page. From there, you just need to click on this drop down, not click actually, hover over, and then click on this getting started web book. This is the link that you need to open in a new tab if you want or if you want you can open in the same window and this is your choice whatever you want now here if you go to the like get started when you open this url you see there were two steps which we did completed in the previous video now here there is something this was something verification request where hop dot challenge then integer value which we sent back to facebook from our salesforce now here we got this verification request now this is validating verification request we got event notification this is the place where we will be working on in this video so event notification whenever uh, there is any event occur like we are replying we are reacting we are sending a message uh, we are uh, uh, sending a media videos audios whatever we were sending there is an event occurs right when the event occurs what it does it sends a post mode notification okay it hit the post method it send you some data and what is that data this is how the data looks like there will be a top object called entry the timestamp then what are the changes id uuid and there will be many more fields as well we will be seeing in the real time so here this is a post method that is how we get to know okay we need to create a at the rate http post method for our apex rest inside our apex rest class okay and then if you see there is a very important header which we are receiving is x hyphen hub hyphen signature hyphen 256 and this is the value that we will be getting sha 256 equal this is going to be same for every request and this is going to be changed. It says that super long SHA 256 signature. That is what we will be receiving. Now, if you scroll down, we got the payload content. Under that payload content, you will see that these are the multiple entries I was talking about the object, entry, ID, changed field. What are the changes when the, that was sent? Okay. And if you see immediate below, there is a very small heading which says that validating payloads so now here why we are validate because you know that this uh, url is a publicly accessible url so anyone can send this to salesforce if they get to know what is a url they can send anything we don't have any such uh, restrictions right regarding access tokens or something 
So how we would make sure this request which is being sent to Salesforce is authentic request. It's not sent by any hacker or intruder. So to do that, every web hook will have a validation a validation concept. Okay, it's not only Facebook. It is going. It could be anything like GitHub. It could be your uh, PayPal. It could be uh, your uh, Amazon API. It could be any API. Whatever you are doing, it will have the concept of validation. So how you are going to validate is this. These are the steps that we have to follow. Okay. So we are saying okay. Uh, create a SHA 256 signature using the payload of your app's signature. Okay. App's secret, not signature. So there will be a secret that we'll be finding. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to generate the SHA 256 signature. So how you will generate? There is a crypto class in Salesforce, and then there is a method which we can use to generate the SHA 256 signature. Now, how, um, now what we need to do is after what we need to do once we completed step one. After that, we need to compare our signature with this signature. Okay, after SHA 256. So this is the header we talked about. So we'll remove this and we'll compare our signature if it is equal or not. If it is equal, that means we are actually getting an authentic request from WhatsApp webhooks, not uh, from any intruders okay so to do this what we'll do is first we need this application secret for our Facebook application so again we'll get back to our application page this is our application ID we don't need this we need application secret so go to this dashboard click on this dashboard from the left okay and then under the app uh, this is the uh, app rate limit yeah click on the settings under basic you will see there is app ID which is visible then there is app secret okay you need to click on so then again it is going to ask your password so once you provide the password you will find this app secret okay copy this app secret this will be we will, will we will be using in our apex class you can store it in a custom label if you want like just copy this go to salesforce navigate to setup and you can just search for custom label and here click on new custom label and you can say fb app token okay or secret paste whatever you have copied and save it the first like the first part of the first step is completed we have got this secret i have another custom label so i will be using that custom label for me which is uh, let me show you which is whatsapp secret the reason I wanted to use the, uh, show you this so that you don't get confused when I'm using this particular custom label. Okay. Now let's go to our particular class, which is our Apex REST. First thing that we have to do is we have to create a method which is going to be global, static, and void in nature. Name could be anything. You can put do post. You can say handle webhook notification. You can say handle WhatsApp notifications. It could be anything. And the annotation on the top of that method should be at the rest HTTP post. This is what you have to do. Next thing, first we have to take, we, we have to send some response back to Facebook to tell either there was an error or there was a success. Because what Facebook, uh, what not Facebook, what Webhooks does, it actually keeps retrying the Webhook, keeps retrying sending the Webhook at a certain interval. So we don't want to retry the webhook which are successfully completed. So we will say, okay, we are getting the response. We also talked about the same thing in the previous video that there is a class called rest context. And under that class, there is a variable called a response that is actually type of rest response class. Then we are just adding a header to the response content type because this is what we are going to send it back. Then we need a body because this is where we will be seeing up our response, whatever the WhatsApp is sending. That this response basically rest context dot request dot request body dot to string. This is going to give us the string format of our 
complete message that user has replied or send it. And then we also need the headers. The reason we need headers because in the document, it clearly says that the signature we'll get is under the headers. Okay. So how we get the header is there is rest context dot request. Why we are using request not response? Because we are receiving a request, we are not sending a request, right? So we are receiving a request and we got headers. It is returning a map of a string and a string. That's what we are doing, okay? Then what I said is, I oh, said, oh, um, I called a method called validate stripe signature, okay? This is a method which I copied from a different class. That is why it is saying stripe signature. So I have changed the name, which is say that WhatsApp signature okay now the method name is validate whatsapp signature it is accepting two parameters the request that we are receiving and the response that we are receiving response means the body exact body that we are receiving from the webhook it could be from whatsapp webhook or maybe let's say intruder is trying to send us some request then what we have is we said okay uh, we got the request headers okay we got the request headers here then what we said now get this particular header and store into the string type of variable whatever we are getting the signature from the request okay we got this whatsapp signature then this is the payload because whenever we are trying to generate the signature with the help of any algorithm which could be hsa like sha 256 hmac 256 could be anything okay we need a payload for which particular payload we are trying to generate a signature. That's why we got the payload, which is nothing. Again, this is the request body which we are getting. Okay. This is not a response body. Just uh, note the differences here. This is a request body that we are receiving from the WhatsApp web. Book. Then what we have is we have got this WhatsApp secret. This is nothing. This is our secret. The access uh, Facebook application secret key that we've just created stored into the custom label. Then we are here signing a payload, which is again a blob value. Okay, we are signing a payload. We are saying, okay, there is a class called system. There is a method under that class. Sorry, class is crypto. The method is generate Mac. This is the algorithm name, which is HMAC SHA256. If you check your document, you will find it is again talking about SHA 256. Then what payload we wanted to sign and what is our secret? Once we've got that signed payload, what we said is create another variable, say that encoded payload, and we will say SHA 256 equal to encoding util dot convert to hex. We need to convert to the hexadecimal format and whatever the signed payload is. Now, why we are adding this part? The reason we are adding this part, because if you again go to document, it is saying that everything after this, we need to compare everything after SHA256 equal. So instead of getting a sub string, we are saying, okay, let's add this particular in uh, a string into our encoded payload, into our signature, which we generated, and then compare with the WhatsApp signature. Then here what we have is, we said, okay, create a variable called response, where we'll say encoded payload equal to WhatsApp signature. If it is equal, return signature valid message. Otherwise, return not signature valid. Now, from where we are getting these two variables, these are defined at the top of our class. Valid message says that signature valid. Not valid message says that signature could not be verified. Now again, we'll get back over here because our cursor is hitting here. Okay, it is pending here. Now what we'll say is the response valid. If it is valid, then we are just putting the debug log. If it is not valid, we are returning success as a false, event as unknown, message as whatever message we found. And then we set the status code that's 401, which is nothing that is indicating unauthorized access. And then we are breaking our code from here by returning a return statement. If this is not the case, that means if we got here, our signature was valid, 
then these two lines will get executed it will say event was success and response is 200 so this is how we validate our request this is how we get this is the exact core of our code where we will be making the changes in later videos we might create the object and store the information out there so this is something which we have done i know it is quite too much it might be too much for some of you to digest how it working but i would suggest if you feel disconnected please pause the video uh, have a sip of tea or coffee or go to for a walk for a 5 or 10 minutes and then come back and if you're talking about code you don't need to worry you will get the code into the first comment as well as in the description of the video now as we did set up this okay as we did set up this particular web token everything is there how we will know that this particular debugs are getting executed so for this we will be turning the debug log on for the site guest user so to do that go to your salesforce homepage in the quick search box type debug okay under the environments logs select debug logs and here you need to click on new and for the traced entity name click on this lookup icon and then here you need to search for guest okay we are not seeing guest might be like this okay search for site instead of guest search for site so you will see all the guest users for your sites so select whatever the guest user you want for me it is uh, uh, max fit site guest user i know i have used this site in the previous video but i'm not using this one i'm using max fit site guest user and if you have created the site with this name salesforce whatsapp site guest user select that site and then for the date for both start date and end date select from here and then for end date change the date to one day ahead it could for me seven and eight it could be different for you for debug level again click on that lookup icon and select sfdc underscore dev console go ahead and click on save this is something that you have to do for your site guest user in order to see the debug log now we have uh, we have done we have turned on the debug log on what you can do is you can go to your whatsapp and send some message okay i just send some message and if you reply this oh sorry not reply if you refresh this we should be able to see some some logs over here you can see there is one log which we've got and it clearly says that log is whatsapp webhooks v1 this is the same url of our class which we have given okay now go ahead open it either in a new tab or you can open in the same tab and then here it is going to tell us either it is correct or it is not correct and it'll say user underscore debug we've got some debug over here so if you see it says that header response from whatsapp and then say that response from whatsapp if i copy this response and uh, from the google search for json beautifier and open that beautifier code paste it here and instead of preview if i beautify it okay and make it big you will see right this is the what's a business account what is the id what are the changes so you will see contact this is my contact okay i have sent the message what message i have sent this is the testing message okay now let's quickly go ahead and reply to a message which has been sent to us for example this is the message i'm replying okay i will say reply okay i have just sent a reply and if you get back to your debug log again do a refresh you will see another debug log is here let's open this again then again find user underscore debug and this time we will again copy and let's duplicate this okay i'm duplicating pasting whatever json i have copied beautify and big okay now this time we will see here what we've got is again message is this display phone number phone number id uh, who is the contact let's try to compare this we've got display phone number phone number id is there we've got the contact then we've got the messages okay what we've got is we've got from who sent 
okay what is the message id the timestamp and text okay get back to our message we got message this time we got context we got one more object within a message which said that context and this is the whatsapp id okay that means we sent a message from this particular number and this was the id and for this particular whatsapp id for with this particular whatsapp message user has replied here this is how the user is replying okay we got this we got a new context this is different we need to understand this object structure in order to make to see either user is replying or user is sending a direct message now let's test one thing let's quickly go ahead and react this okay i'm just reacting something like love okay and let's see what will happen are we getting any kind of new debug log over here or not so go ahead and refresh this we got one more debug log right again we'll open it and we'll use user debug and we got this again okay let's go ahead duplicate our uh, json beautify as well and then paste it over here click on beautify and click on this to make it big this time we got okay message if everything is here up to here everything is okay we are good now we've got from this is the message id this is a timestamp now, now what is a type it is a reaction we did a reacted to a message we reacted to this message and this is the emoji we reacted so you can see that right, this is how easily we are able to capture whatever the response user is sending to us with the help of webhooks so this was it for this video thank you for your time and if you are still here i really appreciate you and uh, before you close this please uh, again give it a like subscribe and uh, don't forget to press that bell icon we will meet in the next video thank you